Hey there YouTube, this is Mr. Lubufu and welcome back to MTG Mastery. Today we're going to be covering Tempest Block, which for the sake of continuity, the story from the set of Weatherlight is also encapsulated here. So this is going to be a slightly longer episode, but it seems you guys enjoy the story. Anyway, let us begin. 4,000 years after Urza and Mishra reopened the portal to Phyrexia, the evil Lord Yogmoth sits poised to invade his one-time home, Dominaria. The plane's only hope for survival is a cache of powerful artifacts known collectively as the Legacy Weapon. When put together, they assemble a powerful Doomsday Weapon. These artifacts will have the potential to destroy the dark powers that will try to invade the planet. The focal point of this weapon is a flying ship called the Weatherlight, and its intrepid crew searches the planes to find all the pieces of the legacy before the invasion commences. Only the reluctant leadership of C Captain Gerard Caption and the skills of Minotaur First Mate Tar Tongarth, Ship's Navigator Hannah, Samite Healer Orim, Goblin Cabin Hand Squee, Miri, a Cat Warrior, Ertai, an arrogant wizard adept, Karn, a mechanized golem, Krovax, a cursed nobleman, and Stark, a guide, can save the day. But wait, you must be asking, wasn't the captain of the Weatherlight Cisse? Didn't she save the day from mortal danger just last episode? Well, Cisse's been kidnapped, and now they have to travel to the Plain of Wrath to save her before they can complete their destiny. And Gerard, of course, will have to live up to his own overwhelming responsibilities by facing his blood brother, Vuel. Now, Vuel, for lack of a better term, is a total jerk face McGee. It's his fault that the pieces of the legacy were scattered in the first place. Karn had been storing them for Gerard until he was ready to use them, but Vuel kinda ruined that plan. He sweared revenge on Gerard for no real reason apart from him being a jerk, he travels to Wrath and changed his name to Volrath and sold out any semblance of goodness he had by becoming Yogmoth's first in command. Turns out Volrath is the one who kidnapped Cisse because jerkface McGee. So the crew finally arrives on Wrath, only to find, guess who, Volrath waiting for them in his own ship, the Predator. Commanded by Grevin Ilvek, the Evansar's magically mutated enforcer. As the battle rages across decks and railings, the nobleman Krovax glimpses Selenia, the angel who once protected his manor as she dives in and out of combat. His face freezes as he realizes the truth. Selenia now serves Volrath. The sword that defended his family now slays his allies. Krovax desperately tries to reach her, but they are kept apart by the frenzy of the battle. He does not know that Selenia, whose very creation equipped her with an empathetic link to Krovax, sensed his approach and led the Predator to this bloodbath. Selenia despises Grevin and Volrath, and would choose to be with Krovax if she could, but she cannot question Volrath's commands, destroy his enemies, and seize the legacy. Grevin, in true evil, and evil action movie villain style, boards the Weatherlight to fight Gerard personally. Grevin starts to overpower Gerard and is on the brink of victory when Vati, Grevin's second in command, fires a massive cannon shot at Grevin in an act of treason. This backfires massively on Vati. Gerard is tossed from the Weatherlight. Grevin takes all the pieces of the legacy on board and shows Vati how to skydive without a parachute, by deciding, eh, I'll toss you overboard. Grevin kidnaps Karn, and watches as the weatherlight falls towards the plain below, not knowing that Tongarth is dangling from the rope on the bottom of the Predator. Miraculously, nobody on board dies in the fall, and Miri and Hannah go to find Gerard. After a brief battle with a shapeshifter, they find broken branches from Gerard's fall. Things are looking up when a group of elves capture them and take them prisoner. Luckily, these elves, led by Eladomri, Lord of Leaves, hear a prophecy from their oracle that says Gerard is the Chosen One to unite everyone on wrath. Eladomri 
frees Miri and Hannah and orders his troops to stand down surrounding the Weatherlight. It turns out that Gerard was saved by the elves as well, and he walks into the tent unharmed. At this moment, Hannah and Gerard share a passionate kiss. Hashtag Team Gerard for life. Now cue Mission Impossible music. Dun, 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 dun. Jared and the rest of the crew are to sneak in the back door while the elves distract Volrath by attacking the front of his stronghold. Their plans catch a bit of a hitch when they realize that the Thrawn Crystal, the method to get back home to Dominaria, is damaged. Knowing this, they travel to a mystical gate that supposedly allows for travel between planes and leave Ertai to figure it out to figure out this erratic portal as they begin the assault. As the weatherlight travels through the massive chimneys and everything appears to be going smoothly until beasts attack. Slivers. Each new wave of slivers brings a new threat. They grow faster, stronger, better with each new wave that joins the fray. They begin growing wings and flying and becoming stronger themselves. The slivers begin to overpower the ship. Hannah notes how each new wave gave new powers to the group and began targeting specific slivers to minimize the power of the swarm. Eventually, after a long and grueling battle, the ship emerges and lands on the stronghold. They travel to the prison tower, where they find Karn nearly cataconic with emotional agony. See, Karn kinda had this whole Batman I'm never gonna kill anybody thing going cause he accidentally did kill somebody and he was traumatized by it so he, you know, was trying very hard not to. But his cell is filled with Mogs, the brutish goblins of wrath, and its floor continuously shakes, causing him to stumble into the creatures and crush them. When Gerard finally gets the cell door open, the surviving Mogs flee into the darkness. Gerard now knows beyond doubt who Volrath is. Only one person would know how to torment Karn by forcing him to break his vow never to injure or kill other beings. They find Tangarth in another cell, one designed to slowly mutate its prisoner. The Minotaur has been horribly disfigured, and he moans in anguished fury for his ruined appearance. Gerard hands Tangarth the sword taken from a guard Miri killed. This is who you are, he tells Tangarth. Not your horns, not your bones, your sword. Tangarth gratefully accepts the weapon and continues with Gerard. The band hurried, hurriedly searched the rest of the cells for Cisse and Stark's daughter, Takara, who's also been kidnapped, but they find only the twisted result of Volrath's experiments. In a barren laboratory, they finally find Cisse imprisoned in a glass cylinder. Gerard wants to repay the debt of loyalty to his friend, but fears that simply breaking the glass to open the cylinder could cause her harm. After an unsuccessful search for a release method, however, he reluctantly falls back on brute force to free her. Cisse tumbles out, disoriented, but before Gerard can take her outstretched hand, Miri hisses and slashes it open. Cisse shrieks and shapeshifts into a mass of biting tentacles, which quickly escapes. Shaken, but grateful for Mary's keen sense of smell, the search party presses on to the dream halls. As they climb higher and step onto a new bridge, a blur from above hurtles towards Krovax, Selenia. Mary instinctively leaps forward, the dark angel slashes open Mary's abdomen and prepares to deliver the death blow. Krovax wildly flails his sword at Selenia, weeping for all he has lost. She also sobs as she defends herself, and then suddenly freezes, deliberately allowing one of Krovax's wild swings to strike home. She explodes in a burst of black and white mana that swirls around Krovax and forces its way into his body. Selenia's destiny is fulfilled, Krovax's curse is set in motion, and he is ultimately condemned for killing all that he loves. He collapses onto Selenia's sword and grows pale as death, but his breathing continues as fangs push their way through his gums. He's become a vampire. Gerard, meanwhile, decides that Khan and Tangarth must take Miri and Krovak to the ship and remain there, while he and Stark continue to search for Cisse and Tarkora. Karn and Tangarth work their way to the weatherlight. Khan, Khan pauses. 
He senses the legacy, which can only mean that the pieces are assembled and close by. This is far too important to leave behind, and the two separate. Tangarth carries Miri and Krovax to the ship, and Karn follows the pole of the legacy. Karn finds the artifact guarded by the Sliver Queen, a, gar- a gar- gargantuan beast that constantly generates baby slivers. She rears up to attack, but he points to the legacy and tells her they are a part of him. He demonstrates how the pieces fit inside of him, and she understands, by, res- by summoning her slivers back to her body. She allows Karn to reclaim the legacy. Back at the portal, Ertai strikes a bargain with Lina, a Sultari emissary. The Sultari will help the young wizard open the portal so the Weatherlight can escape. In return, he will hold it open long enough for them to also escape Wrath and the half-life they endure there. The Sultari had been living a half-life, trapped in the shadows and wanted to be free. Lina goes to tell the Weatherlight's crew what is happening. Just as Lina delivers her urgent message, Tangarth, fresh from captivity, returns with the Krovax and Miri and delivers them to the ship's healer below decks. The Minotaur quickly informs Hannah of the search party's new plan to rendezvous with the Weatherlight in Volrath's gardens, then races back to rejoin them. Karn also returns, bearing the pieces of the legacy. Among them is the Sky Shaper, a powerful device that can boost the ship's Thran engine. The Weatherlight immediately sets sail for the gardens, only to be attacked by the Predator. It tethers the Weatherlight with harpoon lines, but Hannah uses this against it, swerving into a series of daring turns to smash the larger ship against the stronghold supports. Grevenilvec orders the lines released. The Weatherlight surges forward free. However, Greven dispatches two ornithopters to harry the ship. Below deck, Karn busily attempts to fit the Sky Shaper into the engine. Outside, resistance to the Emincar has become revolution, and the stronghold itself is under assault. The tribes of Wrath strike at Volrath's Mog troops and regroup for a strategic withdrawal. Meanwhile, Gerard and the newly found Cisse and Takara and Stark and Tongarth are making for the rendezvous. The Weatherlight has a slight lead over the pursuing Predator, and Krovax, hideously transformed, is half mad from the voices in his head. The last of his humanity drains from him. He staggers on deck, followed quietly by a suspicious Miri. He climbs onto the mechanism that controls the ship's sails and begins clawing at it in an attempted sabotage. Miri hurls himself at him, and the pair tumble over the side of the ship to the gardens below, fighting even as they fall. Gerard emerges from the trees and comes upon the duel between the injured cat warrior and Mad Noble. He is unable to intervene, however, and enraged Grevin confronts him and a second lethal duel erupts. Faced with the impossible task of both defeating Grevin and helping Miri in time to escape, Gerard breaks away from Grevin and must make a horrible choice. Attempt to help Miri and risk both the legacy and the entire crew's lives, or make for his ship attempt an escape, and leave Miri and Krovax to their shared fate. Agonized by his choice, he returns to the Weatherlight with a furious Grevin in pursuit. Augmented by the Sky Shaper, the Weatherlight outruns her pursuers to the portal, which opens as planned. Both the ship and the Sultari escape, but the planeswalker Urza deactivates the portal to prevent further pursuit. Urtai is stranded on the wrong side, even as he makes good to his crewmates' escape. He is captured by the Predator, where Grevin now controls his fate. Urza now must contemplate his next move. And with that, the Wrath Cycle ends. Massive cliffhanger, I know. But uh, join us next week, where we'll go to Urza's, uh, Urza's block and continue up the story of the Weatherlight and the Legacy Weapon. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you guys next time. Thank you all for watching this episode of MTG Mastery. If you guys are interested in any of the other videos in this series, whether it be lore, draft strategies, pack analysis, or the pack openings themselves, 
go ahead and click on the annotations now to be taken to playlists with the full list of all uploaded content of that type. Thank you guys all for watching. Rate, comment, and subscribe.